one side who completely believes in themselves and another side who doesn't seem to believe in themselves anymore. Yeah, I, I think you, you're onto something. I think uh, Arsenal are where Liverpool uh, has been in the last two, three, four seasons, right? Uh, you know, the different, not just not just in the goals that they want to achieve, I think, but also in terms of uh, the way they play, because they are very similar. And before we, you know, I don't want to get into the weeds of tactics, but if you look at it in the wide areas, you know, Mo Salah and Sadio Mane at their best. And I, I look at Martinelli, I look at Saka, uh, the way they attack, it's, it's, it's pretty similar. But the bottom line here is that, you know, and sacrilegious almost to say, and I don't mean it in a general way, but I think that cycle uh, of achieving the big goals is over uh, for Liverpool, and in terms of in terms of Arsenal, this is just the beginning of Arsenal reclaiming the glory days, isn't it? Right. I mean, they have young, hungry, passionate players that are seeing that the, the, this process is true. It's working very, very well. Trust the process. <laughs> Yeah, the process, it's there, right? And, you know, with every game that you win, the big games, right? We were just questioning Arsenal, well, after the, you know, loss to Manchester United, well, can they do it in, in big games? They've done it in North London Derby. They've done it here. They're just hungry. They want to win things right now. Whereas Liverpool, obviously, uh, had that period of three or four years. And it's impossible to keep that hunger, right? And, and Liverpool fans will fight uh, you on this one. Uh, but they deep deep down they know what's happening here is, is that some of the players it's that willingness people will say well they don't press as well it's not that it's the counter press k right it's the it's the hunger and willingness again willingness to win the ball back immediately after you lose it i mean if you watch that goal 55 seconds in i mean they were just running alongside arsenal they didn't do that right uh, i mean the third goal was very much uh, you know the same you know the the, the build up to it as well it's it, it just almost impossible it's a built in excuse because you can't do it with that hunger with that intensity with that eagerness you can't do it over and over and over again well, you talked about that first goal. It came from Gabriel Martinelli. He's brilliant, isn't he? He scored or assisted in six of his last seven Premier League home games. And he's so hungry, shows so much energy in everything else that he brings to this side. I, I think he's the sort of player that we all know he's good, but he's finding himself how good he really is. And that's that confidence. I mean... If you watched him previously, before this season, uh, you know, flashes when he was coming off the bench, you saw the talent, you saw the potential and everything else. But now you have to confirm that. And when you do get to play against the best consistently, and as a player, it, there's that feel. You beat somebody once, twice, three times. You do it the next week, the week after as well. Then you start to feel... You know, I don't want to use the word invincible, but I mean, you do when you have that much talent. We can talk about Erling Holland. We can talk about the best in the world. That's what they do. They just know that they're capable of doing it. And every time they do it, that confidence grows. So no surprise here. An incredible, incredible uh, talent. And again, Saka, and I'm happy that we've talked about it, even without scoring as many goals as he did last season, uh, continues to be just as good, if not better to a degree, without scoring, because he's been absolutely tremendous this season as well. Uh, almost, you want to say, in the shadow of Martinelli and maybe Gabriel Jesus, and I find him to be almost a man of the match every game Arsenal has played so far. Yeah, obviously, you can talk about whether you thought it was a soft penalty or not, but he did step up and score that penalty as well, Saka. And we know that carries so much more weight with it because of what happened in the Euro 2020 to 2020 final. It was 2021 yes. when it played, wasn't it? So it still confuses me. That front three, though, you've mentioned the three of them. Usually, Liverpool were coming into a game. We were talking about this formidable front three. Obviously, Mane's not there anymore. Suddenly, it's Arsenal front three that we're talking about. You've touched on all three of them there with Saka, Martinelli and Jesus. Just looking so great. I think it's something like 12 goals and nine assists between them. Let's look at things on the other side then. Darwin Nunez did score the equaliser at once Martinelli had put Arsenal ahead early. Now, the ability is obviously there, but is adaptability the key here, Janish? Yes, I, I have, you know, the one player that I actually ha don't have any worries about is Darwin Nunez. I, I've seen enough in the past and I see it now. And of course, stop, start sort of season. It's very, very difficult to to uh, to just come in. And, you know, the red card uh, uh, didn't help him, missed three games as well. But aside from the goal, I've seen enough. And, and, and again, 
he's going to get even better, but there lies the issue with Liverpool as well. And you alluded to that a little bit with Arsenal because that front three is consistent. Something that Liverpool has always had. If you think of Liverpool at their best, right? It was Salah, it was Mane, and it was Bobby Firmino. And that never changed. Now, there may have been a rotation, but every big game that Liverpool has had in the past, you could pick the starting 11, the front three for sure, but the starting 11 with one exception maybe. And that would have been in the center of the mid field somewhere where Jurgen Klopp has had a choice here Arsenal just look at them right I mean there's that rotation there's Europe but when it comes to the big game there's Saka it's Gabriel Jesus and and there's Martinelli as well so for Darwin Nunez now he's had to deal with not playing playing with different partners right now it's going to be even worse because let's not forget I haven't seen the report but it does not look for uh it look good for Luis Diaz uh yes, yes. he you know he's going to be out uh probably so now you're new in the country, you're new in the league. There's incredible pressure because you're playing for Liverpool Football Club. And so so that's difficult, that's difficult for anybody. But I think that when Liverpool gets their mojo, if you if you will, uh, together, whenever that will be, I think that when Nunez is going to be one of those players that we talk about week in and week out. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not even a question of giving up on him, but I've seen enough to know. Uh, and even in that last game, that uh, he certainly is a is a special player. Speaking about Mojo, it's a it's a question that I asked on I think the very first PL Express ever. What's wrong with Salah? We can still ask that question now. Uh, yes, although I, I'll tell you, I mean, there's been other games, even before games, where I think if I were Jurgen Klopp, I would have said him to send a message. He he, you know, that's the difference sometimes with Jurgen Klopp. I think he hasn't had to deal with uh, with this for a long time now. But uh, if I look at, look at Pep Guardiola, I mean, even if you're in the greatest of forms, he still sometimes sends you a message, and it's a message that Mo Salah uh, should have been sent by now. Although I questioned the withdrawal of Mo Salah in this particular game, not that he was great, he wasn't bad, but I think when Luis Diaz went down, I think Mo Salah was substituted and was still two two, and and I get yeah, in the seventieth minute. And I get it, Fabinho, to, you know, obviously two two, you're away from home, things aren't going their way. I'm not saying it's a it's a bad decision from Jurgen Klopp, but. I just think they also sent a message to Arsenal and say, okay, they're done. I mean, because really they, at that stage, there wasn't really anybody to worry about for the most part. And I think Mo Salah, again, even when playing badly, he's one of those players that, you know, can't pull a, a rabbit out of a hat. But uh, yeah, Mo Salah, the whole season, this is nothing new. Part of me, and I'm going to say that very, very quietly, but he re did renew his contract with Mo Sadio Manegan. I wonder if at Liverpool Football Club they need to think about maybe after the season. Uh, remember that moment with uh, with Coutinho, how much money they got for him, and how able Liverpool were, were to re to buy players, you know, the Van Dykes of the world, to really to really get Liverpool the structure that 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 they had after that. I almost wonder if there's somebody out there, you know, the Real Madrid's of the world, who knows, maybe Barcelona, the big clubs, if an offer comes in, they ought to think about it. Yes, it's going to be a massive loss. Yes, I can't believe I'm talking about it to some degree because he's a great, great player. But there comes a time where you have to rebuild a little bit and Liverpool can't spend the money like uh, Manchester City. So sometimes you have to sacrifice a player in order to get two or three players uh, for the future. All right, after this game, Jurgen Klopp himself said that Liverpool are no longer in the title race. Do you agree? Yes, uh, I mean, I see, you know, I wonder it took him took him a while, but, but I understand why. Of course, you never give up, and and I'm sure some are probably already questioning him why you would do it, but that's reality. That that's that's where they are right now, and and I've always said that the beginning of the season is massive psychologically for everybody. I mean. You win two games out of what eight now in the Premier League with Manchester City and Arsenal on top of that uh, going like that. It, you just can't recover that. You just it, it's just impossible because you're asking for an absolute collapse from uh, uh, Arsenal Manchester City. And I still think as much as I like what Arsenal are doing, this is all about Manchester City. This is not about Arsenal. Uh, 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 still, I mean, this is a uh, all right. <laughs> these is are that one horse race or a two horse race then? Uh, one horse race. It's it's Manchester City. Uh, you have to you have to give Arsenal credit, and we do continuously, right? We still saying that they're contenders. Why not? They're top of the table. Well, they're not contenders if it's not a two horse race for you, Yanish. 
they are contenders to make Manchester City uncomfortable. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.